Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last, late last month, two bioethicists, Dr. Alberto Giobellini and Francesca Minerva, published an outrageous paper in the Journal of Medical Ethics justifying the deliberate premeditated murder of newborn babies during the first days and even weeks after birth. Giobellini and Minerva wrote, and I quote, when circumstances occur after birth that would have justified abortion, what we call after birth abortion should be permissible. Mr. Speaker, they've just coined, uh, Madam Speaker, a brand new phrase, after birth abortion. The killing of newborns, the killing of little children, boys and girls, immediately after their birth and up to weeks later. These bioethicists argue that if a newly born child poses an economic burden on a family or is disabled or is unwanted, that child can be murdered in cold blood because the baby lacks intrinsic value and according to Giobellini and Minerva, is simply not a person. Giobellini and Minerva write, and I quote again from their article, their paper, actual people's well-being, you and I, Mr. S Madam Speaker, are actual people. Adults are actual people, according to them. Actual people's well-being could be threatened by a newborn, even if healthy, requiring energy, money, and care, which the family might happen to be in short supply of. Close quote. As any parents, especially moms, will tell you, children in general and newborns in particular require an enormous amount of energy, money, and boatloads of love. If any of those things, however, are lacking or oppose what Giobellini and Minerva call a threat, does that justify a death sentence? Are the lives of newborn children and newborn babies so cheap? So expendable? The murder of newly born children is further justified by Giobellini and Minerva in this renowned journal's article. Why they carried it is certainly suspect. But they argue that it's further justified because newborn infants, like their slightly younger sisters and brothers in the womb, quote, cannot have formed any aim that, is, that she has prevented from accomplishing. In other words, no dreams, no plans for the future, no, quote, aims that can be discerned, recognized, or understood by adults equals no life at all. This preposterous, arbitrary, and evil prerequisite for the attainment of legal personhood is not only bizarre, it is inhumane in the extreme. Stripped of its pseudo-intellectual underpinnings, Giobellini and Minerva's rationale for murdering newborns in the nursery is indistinguishable from any other child predator wielding a knife or a gun. Giobellini and Minerva say the devaluation of unborn babies is inextricably linked to the, to the devaluation of unborn children. So let me say that again. The devaluation of newborn babies, even into weeks of their life outside their mother's womb, is inextricably linked to the devaluation of unborn children and is indeed the logical extension of the abortion culture. And they write this, that they propose to call the practice of afterbirth abortion rather than infanticide in order to emphasize that the moral status of the individual killed that is to say, the unborn baby, the baby, is comparable to that of a fetus. Whether she will exist is exactly what our choice is about, they write. So let's, again, get this right. Because the unborn child has been deemed to be a non-person and be, can be killed at will, the newborn child, who is very, very similar in almost every aspect except dependency and a little bit less or more mature, that the choice is, if they're unwanted, the parents can order the killing, the execution of that child. Madam Speaker, these anti-child pro-murder rationalizations remind me of other equally disturbing rants 
from highly credentialed individuals over the years. Princeton's Peter Singer suggested a couple of years ago, and I quote him in pertinent part, that there are various things you could say that are sufficient to give moral status to a child. After a few months, maybe six months or something like that, and you get perhaps a full moral status. Really, only after two years. Break that down. Only after two years, Madam Speaker, should we really confer a sense of personhood to a child who is no longer a baby anymore uh, because of this particular intellectual's perspective. Dr. James Watson, the Nobel laureate, laureate for unraveling the mystery of DNA many, many years ago, wrote in Prism magazine, and I quote this, if a child were not declared alive until three days after birth, then all parents could be allowed the choice. Only a few were given under the present system. The doctor could allow the child to die if the parents so chose and save a lot of misery and suffering. I believe this view is the only rational, compassionate attitude to have. Compassionate to allow a newborn to die? I think not. In like manner, Dr. Francis Crick, who received the Nobel Prize, a Peace Prize, a Prize, I should say, along with Watson, said, and I quote, no newborn infant should be declared human until it has passed certain tests regarding its genetic endowment. And if that, and that if it fails these tests, it forfeits the right to live. Madam Speaker, the dehumanization of unborn children has been going on for decades. What is less understood and appreciated is the dehumanization of newborn and very young infants. That too has been going on for years, but it has gotten in the last few years demonstrably worse. Dr. Gio Bellini and Minerva's article must serve as a wake-up call. The lives of young children who are truly the most unprotected class of individuals in our society are under assault. Hard questions need to be asked and answered, and defenders of life must be mobilized. I truly believe we have a duty to protect the weakest and the most vulnerable from violence, and now even the hospital nursery is not a place of refuge or sanctuary. Mr. S Madam Speaker, we must strive for consistency. Why do so many, and I have been here, Madam Speaker, for 32 years, and I work every single day of my congressional life on human rights issues, from human trafficking to religious freedom. I've written the Trafficking Victims Protection Act back in 2000 to combat modern-day slavery. I work against torture all over the world, wherever and whenever it rears its horrific head, and that is especially in places like China, North Korea, and elsewhere. But I am left to wonder why so many who claim to be proponents of human rights systematically dehumanize and exclude the weakest and the most vulnerable human beings from legal protection. Why the modern day surge in prejudice and ugly bias against unborn children and now by logical extension, newborn children? Why the policy of exclusion rather than inclusion? They are indeed part of the human family. We should embrace them, love them, and protect them. Why is lethal violence against children, abortion and premeditated killing of newborn infants marketed and sold as somehow benign or progressive, enlightened and compassionate? Why have so many good people turned a blind eye and looked askance as mothers are wounded by abortion and their babies in the womb pulverized by suction machines 20 to 30 times more powerful than household vacuum cleaners or dismembered with surgical knives or poisoned with chemicals. Looking back, how could anyone in the House or the Senate or President Clinton justify the hideous procedure called partial birth abortion? Madam Speaker, 
since 1973, well over 54 million babies have had abortion forced upon them. Some of those children have been exterminated in the second and trimester and third trimester. These are known as pain-capable babies, and those kids have suffered excruciating pain as the abortionist committed his violence upon him or her. Why are some surprised that now the emerging class of victims, newborn kids, newborn children, are being slaughtered in Holland and elsewhere, while a perverse proposal to murder any newborn children, sick or healthy, is advanced in an otherwise serious and respected ethics journal. I urge members to read this article. It will make you sick. It certainly is the opening salvo in an assault on newborn children. So in conclusion, Madam Speaker, children born and unborn are precious. Children, sick, disabled, or healthy, possess fundamental human rights that no sane or compassionate society can abridge. The premeditated murder of newborn babies, those who are one day old after birth, two weeks, three weeks old, is now being justified as being morally equivalent to abortion. I respectfully submit, Madam Speaker, that the Congress, the courts, the President, and society at large have a sacred duty to protect all children from violence, murder, and exploitation. We don't have a moment to lose. The child predators are working overtime to create more victims.